EA Tex motherboards and the installation of graphics cards up to 405mm long inside a 35 litre chassis. Sounds like some compromises have had to be made. But that's exactly what we're looking at today in this review. A compact ATX chassis with support for up to E80 ATX motherboards, graphics cards up to 405 millimeters long and multiple radiators including 360 millimeter. So just how did Geometric Future manage to fit all that into a tiny 35 liter capacity Model 4 chassis? Let's find out. So this is the case I'm talking about, it's the Geometric Future Model 4 King Arthur. It has been launched for several months, we've only just got around to looking at this case right now. In the US it's got an MSRP of $89.99 US dollars. You can pick it up in the US from places like Newegg, but in the UK availability seems to be very sparse. But you can find it on Amazon UK if you search for the term M4 rather than Model 4. Pricing will depend on stock availability. During filming this video the black and yellow version was around £86, but the white version was £156 because it was coming from Amazon US. It features E-ATX compatibility but in a MATX form factor with just 35 litre capacity. Four installation modes including a liftable option for additional space. It supports simultaneous 360 and 240 millimetre radiator installation in the liftable mode. It's manufactured from one millimetre steel plate and 1.2 millimetre plate on the L-shaped side panel and it's three millimetre tempered glass. So let's take a closer look at this case and see what it's all about. It does have some interesting features to it. On the outside it looks subtle with the design on the front. At the top half it's solid, at the bottom there's some mesh for airflow. Front panel connectivity consists of two USB 3.0 Type-A ports, a single USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C port, individual 3.5mm audio jacks for headphones and microphones, and you also have the power and reset button on the front panel. On this side there is a tempered glass side panel, 3mm thick tempered glass to get into the case, you just use this little tab at the front and pull it open. That tab is a bit strange the shape, it's not easy to get hold of and open it but the door swings open. One thing I have noticed about the door is it doesn't shut particularly well, it gets caught here and the little catch at the front there that gets caught but you do have to give it a little push to get it closed and there's like some little bits of foam here and on the corner here, on the corner here and at the back here which I think is just to stop it rubbing against the steel panel. The only problem with that it rubs anyway and it started to rub off that foam already. I'm not sure whether you're supposed to remove that or leave it on. There is a peel on the inside that I've missed. That's pretty satisfying. This tempered glass panel then lifts off the hinge so if you're working on it you can remove the glass completely and there's no fear of breaking it. On top of the case there's a dust filter. It's just plonked on the top though. There's no like recess or anything for it to fit into. Just a magnetic dust filter that just sits on the top of the case there in case you're running some fans at the top as intakes. You might want to use that dust filter if you're not running fans as intakes, not running any fans at all. You want to take that dust filter off because it does look better on the top with this perforated square kind of mesh styling it's got on the top there. It looks better without that mesh filter. The other side panel is kind of an L-shaped side panel. It's all in one, the top and the side. At the back there's another tab that you're supposed to push up to release it, but it's quite awkward to actually remove it. It is held at the front with something, but it is quite difficult. So you actually really need to just try and prise it up from the back. As I say, it is really awkward to get off. Not as easy as it looks at all. As you can see, struggling quite badly. Just getting it off. You have to start getting quite angry with it and pulling it from that side and this side. And then eventually it does come off. And as you can see, the top of it, it's got a large vent. There's also a vent down the side and along the bottom. And that is 1.2 millimeter thick steel. So it is quite, uh, there's quite a bit of weight to that. Then inside it is quite a compact layout as you can see. At the top here, 
there is space for up to 220 or 240 millimeter fans you can also fit up to a 240 millimeter radiator or AIO in the top panel at the rear there's a 120 millimeter fan mount and then on the floor there is space for up to 320 millimeter fans maybe you can fit 140 millimeter fans on there too but I'm guessing only 240s Potentially, you can fit up to a 360 millimeter radiator in there, but there's no fan mounts at the front. It is just that vented front mesh panel. The interesting thing about this case is it has a couple of different installation modes. So currently, it's in the standard mode, and when it's in this mode, you can fit a 150 millimeter or up to 150 millimeter power supply horizontally in the front of the case. So the power would plug in at the back side here and it will exhaust out of this side of the case. You can then install up to a 405 millimeter graphics card, either horizontally or on a vertical mount on the floor. There is a couple of mounting points for a PCIe riser. This panel at the front, you can install a 2.5 inch SSD on here, or you can just remove a few screws. And then that just comes out, so on there you can fit a 2.5 inch SSD mounted at the front of the case. I do think the case looks better with that removed, and if you've got a long graphics card, it will go past there, and you will see it through the L-shaped side window. Alternatively, you can remove some screws from this top panel, so there's one at the front here, one more at the back, and then one at this side, right at the top. And then weirdly, there's one thumb screw at the back that needs to be removed. So that's a captive screw. And then this top panel comes off. Potentially, you can just remove the panel to install your fans or whatever in here. Or you can place it back on the case, but in this, what they call a lifted position. So you do that, put your screws back in. And then that allows more space at the top for up to a 240 millimeter radiator or AIO installed in the top. I think this is why the the uh, case got its name King Arthur, you know, off with its head and all that kind of thing. So in this mode, you can fit the 240 millimeter radiator or AIO up in the top there. And you can also switch to an ATX form factor power supply installed vertically at the front with the power cable coming out of the top here, exhausting out of the top. And that's up to 180 millimeters long which still then allowed you to fit up to a 405 millimeter graphics card. If the power supply exceeds 180 millimeters, it will then reduce the length of the graphics card to, I think, around 310 millimeters. As I say, it supports Motherboards up to E-ATX form factor, obviously that also includes ATX, Micro-ATX, or even Mini-ITX. Graphics cards up to 405 millimeters long. If you want to install the graphics card vertically, it's just a two slot wide vertical mount at the rear. It also supports radiators up to 360 millimeters on the floor and up to 240 millimeters in the roof. The only thing with this, in this lifted mode, when you put the side panel on, you end up with a massive gap at the front here, and you can see right into where the power supply is, which I don't really like the look of. So when I install a system in here, I'm gonna have it in its standard mode, I think. I don't like this lifted mode at all. At the back of the case, you connect up the power to the mains here, then you get this extension lead, which you can plug in at this side to the horizontally mounted power supply, or you plug in at the top if you've got a ATX vertically mounted power supply. At the rear, there is a cutout for the motherboard rear IO, a vent for the 120 millimeter rear fan, seven PCIe slots, and then two vertical PCIe slots. Around this right-hand side of the case, there is quite a lot of space by the looks of it for cable management. It looks like about 30 millimeter space between the motherboard tray and the side panel, which does sound like a healthy amount of cable management space. You can see there are various cutouts for cables up at the top and then down the side here, some along the bottom of the motherboard tray. And you also have some additional storage mounts here. So there's these drive sleds that are removable. There's three of those in total, one there, 
one here and one here. On these you can install either 2.5 or 3.5 inch drives. Then you've got all the front panel cables. The floor of the case is recessed by approximately 35 millimeters and around the perimeter there is some ventilation for airflow in through the bottom of the case. Potentially if you've got a vertical GPU mounted in the case that restricts any fans from being installed on the floor inside the case but potentially if you've got your case in that configuration you can install the fans on the recessed part at the bottom here but it doesn't sound like that will give you lots of space for airflow if your fans are 25 millimeters thick this recess is only 35 millimeters and it's only like then 10 millimeters ground clearance I definitely wouldn't recommend installing fans in there and then putting this case onto a carpet or something like that. You can also see there are several rubber feet on the floor here, so they will help with vibration to some extent. The only problem with those feet is there's none on these corners here. The case feels quite wobbly when it's stood upright. See what that's like when the system's actually built in it and the case weighs a bit more. Accessories included in the case are all in this plastic wallet. You get a assortment of screws, some Velcro ties, and what looks like a large cable clip that's self-adhesive. For the build section of the review, I'm gonna be using the case in its regular mode, so with its head chopped off. So the decapitation mode, I much prefer how it looks like that with the head chopped off, rather than with the lifted mode and the world's biggest panel gap at the front of the case. CPU for the build is the Intel Core i7-14700K. Motherboard is the Gigabyte Z790 Aero G. Graphics, it's a Gigabyte RX 7900 XT Gaming OC. Memory is G-Skill Trident Z5, so this is a 64 gigabyte kit, two 32 gigabyte modules, and it's DDR5. 6400 mega transfers per second. For storage, it's just a single M.2 drive, so it's the Corsair MP700, one terabyte PCIe Gen 5x4 NVMe M.2 SSD. For cooling, it's a bit of a tricky one. I would normally like to install a 360 millimeter AIO for the i7-14700K, but that would mean installing it in the floor of this case. Don't fancy doing that. I don't want to use it in the lifted mode and fit a 240 millimeter AO in the roof. So what I'm gonna try is the Deepcool Assassin 4 air cooler. That, according to the official specs, is 164 millimeters tall, which is the maximum height air cooler you can have in the Model 4 King Arthur. So we'll see how that works out. And then for case fans, I plan to fit three on the floor of the case as intakes, two in the roof as exhaust, and one in the rear as an exhaust also. I'm using these Lian Li Unifan TL120s and there's a uh, selection of forward blade and reverse blade versions of that. And then powering the system, I'm gonna use an SFX power supply. So it's the Seasonic Focus SGX 750, um, 80 plus gold rated, fully modular. And we'll see how that works. Hopefully I'll be able to fit that in horizontally and we won't have to lift the uh, case. So we'll see how it goes, get on with the build, come back and let you know what I think of the case. So build's finished and I've been running some thermal performance tests. I do quite like the look of the case in this default configuration with that split mesh and solid front and the minimalist type of design. There are a couple of things I want to mention about the build and talk about those in a moment. But first I wanna look at the thermal performance. I've run the usual thermal test. So it's a combined 30 minute Cinebench R23 and 3D Mark Speedway run simultaneously. If you want to check out the full testing methodology, head over to kitguru.com where there will be a written review page with all the specs and features of the case and the thermal performance charts. Thermal performance of both the CPU and GPU with the case in its default configuration are decent. The average CPU temperature is high, but it's what we would expect from this CPU and cooler combination. The floor mounted fans certainly help with keeping the GPU temperature at a steady 40 degrees C average delta, and it allows the GPU frequency to boost to a 
around 2300 megahertz. Removing the tempered glass had little effect on the CPU or GPU temperature. Moving the floor fans to the outside of the case dropped the GPU temperature by a degree or two. But this was because the GPU temperature spiked initially so the GPU fans ramped up to 3300 RPM while in the other two configurations GPU fan speed was around 1900 RPM which meant that with the floor fans mounted inside the case noise output of the system is much lower than with the floor fans on the outside in the recess. So as I say, the case looks great and the build looks great in this configuration. I don't really like the look of it with the lifted roof and the big gap at the front. I think that just looks a bit odd. It almost looks out of place as if it was like an afterthought and Geometric Future didn't really know what to do with that gap at the front of the case. There's plenty of space around the right hand side for cable management. That 30 mil space is really useful for running cables and managing cables around that side of the system. The uh, compact size of the case means it should be good to fit in most desk space spaces or any space that you want to put it. However, I have those issues with it. So the looks in the lifted mode, I don't really like. The build quality isn't perfect. I've got that issue with the tempered glass door not quite shutting correctly. And as I mentioned earlier on in the review, the case is a bit wobbly with how the rubber feet are arranged. It's not as bad when you've got the system built inside and that extra weight, it does feel a bit more sturdy. It does still wobble about a bit, which seems a bit weird. I think if the pads were on the four corners of the floor, it would make the case more stable. Installing the power supply, so something I've got to say actually, Earlier on I might have mentioned that the case supports SFX power supplies. Technically it doesn't. Both the horizontal and vertical mounts are for ATX power supplies, but I was thinking because the maximum size is 150 millimeters long, an SFX power supply might be better suited, which is why I was gonna install this Seasonic Focus SGX, which is a SFX power supply, but it has the uh, adapter plate for ATX that comes with it. I was going to use that, but the cables weren't long enough actually. The EPS cable wouldn't stretch to the connector on the motherboard. So I had to hunt around and try and find a power supply that would fit, that probably was ATX format and horizontally mounted. I did manage to find one. It took a bit of routing through the stuff that I've got, but this FSP, Hydro PTMX Pro 1200 watt unit. It's only about 130 millimeters long, which made it ideal for fitting in here in the horizontal mounting position. It doesn't give you loads of space. It is a bit awkward to install an ATX power supply in there, and it's virtually impossible to disconnect or connect any additional cables once the power supply is installed. So it is a bit awkward with an ATX power supply horizontally mounted. As I say, cable management around the right hand side, the space 30 millimeters is really good. So there's plenty of space for working the cables. And if you need to install any fan hubs or 3.5 inch drives in that side of the case, 30 millimeters is loads of space, but there isn't really any predetermined routes for the cables and there's no straps pre-installed so you don't get much help with cable management you just have to feed cables through the cutouts and work out the routes yourself which does make cable management a little more difficult there could have been one or two more cutouts as well up at the top corner here for EPS, there's no cutout there, so you do have to trail the cable to the almost to the middle of the motherboard tray. I also had a problem installing a 120 millimeter fan in the rear fan mount. The screws for the hinge on this top hinge actually interferes with 120 millimeter fan mounts. Maybe it's just the shape of the Unifan SL120s. I couldn't get that in at all. That uh, those screws interfered with that fan. Maybe a different fan would fit in there. I'm sure Geometric Future has tested fans in there, but I would like to see the top hinge maybe spot welded to the chassis or something like that so that the screws don't interfere with fan installation. And also I was going to use the Assassin 4, which is 164 millimeters tall, according to the official specs. I actually measured it from the desk and it's more like 163 millimeters, which according to the spec of the Geometric Future Model 4, it should have fit in, but 
there was no chance. I uh, tried installing it and the tempered glass actually fouled on the top of the cooler. You couldn't shut the door. I went through a few other air coolers, some big air coolers. The Cooler Master MA824 Stealth, that was too big. The new Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 5 and the Dark Rock Elite, they both wouldn't fit. You could fit a Noctua NHD15S in there with just a single fan that would fit quite comfortably. But if you wanted to fit the regular NHD15, you would have to have the fan at its lowest point to be able to fit in there as well. So you are a bit limited with big air coolers. I did manage to fit this Deepcool AK620, which is a uh, dual tower cooler. And that was probably just enough for the i7-14700K. But that's about 160 millimeters tall. And I'd say that is the maximum comfortable size you would want to fit in this case. So 160 millimeters, not the 164 millimeters that is listed in the official specs. So other than those few complaints with the case, I do quite like how it looks. Thermal performance was pretty decent considering that it doesn't have loads of front airflow and I didn't have an exhaust fan fitted in the rear. Quite happy with the thermal performance and uh, quite happy with how the case looks but there are those few niggles that do let it down a little for me. I hope you enjoyed watching this review of the Geometric Future Model 4 King Arthur. If you have please don't forget to give us a thumbs up on the video, hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed to KitGuru. If you like what we do here at KitGuru you want to help support us you can always head over to the store, pick up some merch, or you could subscribe to our Patreon. And as always, if you want to catch up on all the in-depth technical reviews, head over to our website.